Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Arjun Chaudhary. You're on the top story they're tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of March. Nearly a dozen killed in stampede at Hindu pilgrimage in Bangladesh. Pakistan yet to decide on joining operation against Yemen, says Foreign Ministry. And Afghan clerics condemn mob lynching a blasphemy accused woman. And now for all the details. Nearly a dozen Hindu pilgrims were killed in a stampede in central Bangladesh on Friday. Many said the cause of the incident was overcrowding. The incident took place during the bathing ritual at Langal Band, some 12 miles from capital Dhaka, on the banks of River Brahmaputra. According to reports, those killed included seven women and three men, all aged above 50. More than 30 have also been injured. The ritual is one of the largest annual Hindu ceremonies in Bangladesh and draws thousands of devotees from all across the country, including neighbouring India and Nepal. While many witnesses blame mismanagement of the administration towards providing immediate relief, others said lack of adequate ambulances resulted in the toll to rise. According to police, the bathing began in early hours of Friday. But the flow of devotees peaked within a few hours, resulting in a stampede. Langalband is a holy place for Hindu community on the bank of the old Brahmaputra, close to Dhaka Chittagong Highway, where thousands of Hindu devotees take bath with due respect and solemnity every year. Pakistan has said it will respond to any threat to Saudi Arabia. The country has also hinted at joining the Saudi led operation against Yemen. Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif on Thursday held a high level meeting to discuss the developing situation in Yemen. The meeting was attended by Defence Minister Khwaja Asif, advisor to Prime Minister on National Security and Foreign Affairs Sattar Aziz, and Army Chief General Rahil Sharif. The meeting came after Saudi Arabia formally asked Pakistan to join the operation against Houthi rebels in Yemen. Pakistan Foreign Office said the government is yet to decide on Saudi's request. I can confirm that uh, we have been contacted by Saudi Arabia uh, in this regard. The matter is... Uh, uh, being examined. That's all I have to say at the moment. Islamabad traditionally enjoys close ties with Riyadh, which is also one of the top contributors of financial aid to Pakistan. Saudi had also sheltered Prime Minister Sharif for nearly 10 years following his ouster from power in a military coup in 1999. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has expressed desire to become a bridge for a new generation of educated leaders. While on his trip to the United States, he said Afghanistan aims to become a transit country for the entire Asia. <laughs> Afghan President Ashraf Ghani outlined the troubles and potential of his country during a speech at the Council of Foreign Relations in New York. President Ghani focused on the need to develop Afghanistan's economy in order to stabilize the country after commitment from President Barack Obama on Tuesday to slow down the U.S. troops' withdrawal. Ghani stressed on the vital role his nation could play in Asia, which was soon to become the biggest continental economy in the next 25 years with Afghanistan at its heart. Without Afghanistan, Central Asia, South Asia, East Asia and West Asia will not be connected. So this is our first advantage. We, our goal is to become a transit country for transport, for power transmission, for gas pipelines, for fiber optics. It's a networked approach to the economy because this will create massive jobs and in, in opportunities. The constraint, of course, is lack of infrastructure. The talk came at the end of President Ghani's five-day trip to the U.S. Among several other proposals, he also outlined plans to build a strategic railroad stretching from Central Asia to China that would allow Afghanistan to develop its untapped mineral resources. Referring on curbing corruption, President Ghani said he wanted to be a bridge to a new generation of well-educated leaders, including the first woman president of Afghanistan. That's our hope. I hope to be a bridge for the election of these people to the highest office in the land, including the first woman president of Afghanistan. <laughs> president Ghani wrapped his maiden trip to the U.S. with a stop at the United Nations on Thursday. 
He met with Secretary General Ban Ki Moon at the international organization's headquarters in New York. Kani's crucial trip majorly meant to repair ties freed under the predecessor Hamid Karzai. He also made several speeches in Washington, including one to the Congress. The Afghan president was bestowed with the Atlantic Council's highest honor, the Distinguished Leadership Award, at a special ceremony, making him the first South Asian leader to receive the honor. Protests are continuing in Afghanistan against the lynching of a woman for alleged blasphemy last week. Civil society has intensified demand for justice in the brutal incident. Condemning the gruesome killing of 27-year-old Farkunda for allegedly desecrating Quran, thousands of Afghan Islamic clerics from across the country gathered in capital Kabul to register their protest. This comes after a cleric, Molvi Ayaz Niazi, suffered backlash for defending and endorsing the mob lynching of Farkunda. Even as public anger continues to intensify over the killing, clerics called for public punishment of the perpetrators. Many said the lynching was against the teachings of Quran. Farkunda was beaten to death and her body set on fire by a crowd of men after rumors spread that she had burned pages of Quran. The brutal act which took place in the presence of police was outrightly condemned by women rights activists and international organizations alike. So far, 26 people, including 13 policemen, have been arrested ever since government launched an immediate investigation into the incident. It is for the first time that a popular movement has sprung in Afghanistan in support of a woman ever since the hardline Taliban regime was ousted in 2001. Sri Lanka and China have agreed to continue the long-standing bilateral relationship. This comes amid speculations of the new Sri Lankan government favouring neighbouring India over China, which had emerged a key investor in the island nation under the previous administration. The ties between Sri Lanka and China, which strained recently over the suspension of construction of the Colombo Port City project, appear to have been mended. Lankan President Maithripala Sirisena, who is on his first official visit to China, met with his counterpart Xi Jinping and Premier Li Kaohsiung on Thursday. President Xi said the strong bilateral ties are mutually beneficial and a win-win situation for both countries. He also promised the continued support of Beijing in the development of the island nation. The Sri Lankan president on his side said the cancellation of the port project was temporary and the dispute wasn't with China. He also welcomed more Chinese investment in his country. The $1.4 billion infrastructure project was suspended last month by the Sirisena government, citing irregularities in awarding the contract and security concerns. It had also sought a revision of terms of a $5.4 billion infrastructure loan by Beijing. China had made large investments in the infrastructure of Sri Lanka in the past few years, including some key projects there. Sri Lanka also plays a prominent role in the Chinese proposed maritime Silk Route. The growing presence of Beijing in the island had however upset India, which sees it as a security threat. At least two policemen were killed and 15 others were injured in a Taliban-led bomb blast in southern Pakistan on Friday. The explosion ripped through a police van in commercial hub Karachi after a bomb planted inside a motorcycle parked on roadside was detonated. The police commanders belonged to an elite squad that guards VIPs were on the way to Bilawal House in Clifton, the residence of former President Asif Ali Zardari. Security officials in Karachi have come under regular targeted attacks by the Taliban. The Pakistan government had in 2013 launched an operation to eliminate the port city of gangs and criminals. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif had on Wednesday approved of expanding the Karachi targeted operation into its second phase. Bangladesh marked its independence day on Thursday, but many lamented that the trial for the war crimes that were committed during the War of Independence is still dragging on. Thousands were killed by Pakistan and its allied forces in 1971 during the freedom movement. Civil society members and activists of Bangladesh came together in capital Dhaka to mark the 45th Independence Day. 
hundreds including people from all walks of life, trooped under the banner of Kono Jagran Manch or People's Resurgence Platform of Bangladesh to demand speedy war crimes trial. They also said the people of the country have rejected the fundamentalist and divisive politics of the Jamaat-e-Islami, the country's largest religious party. কে স্বাধীনতা দিবস আমাদের প্রত্যাশা হচ্ছে যে যুদ্ধাপরাধের বিচার প্রক্রিয়াটি ঝুলে আছে সেই যে বিচারহীনতা সংস্কৃতি তৈরি হয়েছে খুব শীঘ্রই যুদ্ধাপরাধের বিচারকে ত্বরান্বিত করার মাধ্যমে যুদ্ধাপরাধী কামারুজ্জামানের রায় কার্যকর করার মাধ্যমে বাংলাদেশের দায়মুক্তির যে শপথ নিয়েছে সেই শপথ পূরণ করবে এবং সেই সাথে যুদ্ধাপরাধী সংগঠন জামাত শিবির যারা বাংলাদেশকে সহিংসতার রাজ্যে পরিণত করতে চায় যারা একটি ব্যর্থ রাষ্ট্রে পরিণত করতে চায় তাদের রাজনীতি নিষিদ্ধ করার মাধ্যমে বাংলাদেশ একটি সুন্দর একটা সকল মানুষের বাসযোগ্য একটি Born out of the popular Shahbag Square protest in 2013, the Guru Jagran Manch had led the demand for capital punishment for war criminals in the country. Bangladesh, then known as East Pakistan, witnessed genocide of millions of freedom fighters and leaders in the nine months of civil war in 1971 while seeking independence from West Pakistan. The Bollywood bandwagon rolled out in style at this fashion fiesta. While some cheered from the front row, others added glamour onto the ramp. Take a look at what made it a gala affair. For designers Jatan Verma, Babita Malkani and Asmita Marwa, it was no dearth of celebrities. The who's who of Tinseltown added glitter as they put up a strong show at the 15th edition of Black May Fashion Week Summer Resort 2015. Bollywood hunk Aditya Roy Kapoor added his signature charm to the show for international urban brand Tom Taylor, which was all about confidence, style and elegance. Singer-actor Monica Dogra gave an electrifying performance during the show. Malkani's native style for summer 2015 was reminiscent of Alaskan art. While she kept the styles and drapes simple, the geometric prints and tribal artworks made her creations cut a pretty picture. Actor Soa Ali Khan walked the ramp for Malkani in an attire fusing the metropolitan city with traditional craft. The idea behind her collection today was uh, Alaskan um, and a nice tribal sort of Native American theme. So I liked the bold prints. I thought it was very vibrant and uh, something different that we don't get to see off a lot of it. Celebrity hairstylist and wife of actor Farhan Akhtar, Aduna was at her chirpy best as she took to the runway for designer Asmita Marwa. It was however the show by Shah Rukh Khan's wife Gauri which was high on not just fashion but star power too. Actors Zareen Khan, Ali Evram, Mandira Bedi, Tanisha Mukherjee and Malaika Arora Khan alongside filmmaker Karan Johar made it a starry audience as Gauri presented her first ever line for designer brand Satya Paul's 30th anniversary. The star wife said it was a great experience. Tonight was uh, absolutely thrilling. Um, firstly, to see your collection come live on stage right in front of you. That was amazing, you know, to see it with uh, the entire look, the feel, the hair, the, the, you know, the makeup. It all comes together beautifully tonight. So that was, today was just fantastic for me. Gauri's debut collection revealed a line of casual and holiday wear ensembles with sheer tunics, fluid kaftans, versatile shift dresses and elegant saris all in botanical prints. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories, once again. Nearly a dozen killed in a stampede at Hindu pilgrimage in Bangladesh. Pakistan yet to decide on joining operation against Yemen, says Foreign Ministry. And Afghan clerics condemn mob lynching a blasphemy accused woman. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. And that's all it tonight's edition. We'll do same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.